It will be the most dominant performance. Very nice, very good, very good, very nice. Do you keep in there? Competitions, I always turn it on. For me, I only focus on the ones that kind of mean the most to me, and I will destroy everyone. I want to win at the four stones, so yeah, it should be a good competition for myself and look, but yeah, I'm ready to kind of blow everyone out of the water. <laughs> this is our pre competition meal, um, as per. Nathan's request. The Sheffield Arena is literally two minutes away, so we've just parked up. It's about one o'clock. This will be our last kind of substantial meal before the competition. Go there, we've got some, I don't know, bits and pieces. Have a nap as well. I need another sleep. I think that'll be good. But I'll no, just try to control your adrenaline before we start. Just chill. And then that's it, yeah, just it's another competition, isn't it? So I have a burger with bacon, le 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 lettuce, tom go tom, tomato, and g onion, and ketchup, and a little fries, and a soda, and a soda. That's my order from Five Guys. How we doing, guys? You alright? Thank you, I appreciate it. Yes, of course, of course, pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> Oh well. <laughs> Tom's in the back, we're both right. good. Where is he? He's hiding in the back. Right, right Tom, nice to meet you, mate. Yeah, yeah. 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 Don't, don't go easy tonight, though. No, no, no. Adam's wanting to win it. Oh, so shit. Adam always does. I know. <laughs> he's going to try and beat Tom this time, mate. Always. Yeah. Take care, guys. Cheers now. <laughs> dream I won Britain's strongest one. It's really cool to see Luke and Tom because they both have slightly different ways of getting into competitions. Luke starts to really like get laser focused which we're starting to see and Tom gets I would say like really relaxed which is quite strange to see and then Tom like turns it on before each event. I'm excited. After speaking with Luke and actually I think at this competition as well so far with just specifically Luke I think he's learning to turn it on closer to the competition so there's I was speaking to Amy their psychologist and she talks about the arousal curve and if they stay in that state of arousal for too long they can get burnt out so they're trying to do it closer and closer to the event and I'm noticing Luke's done that this time. I, I think podium for both of them. They've got Arnold's coming up as well. I know both of them don't want to hang back. I know Tom is very confident of retaining his title and I know Luke wants to make a, a mark as well. So Just a wee shout out for the documentary. Roughly when do we expect to see it and how is it doing in the edit? So edit's going really well. William is not going to be here tonight because he's going to be editing a documentary. Luke, my other brother, is also editing a documentary. It's going really well. I'm super excited. We've got some stuff coming out soon so everyone can start to see and get a taste of what the documentary is going to be like. First half of this year, that's what I keep saying, first half of this year. So keep your eyes peeled. It's going to be special. Like I'm so excited to share this with everybody. So yeah. I'm excited because it's the first one of the year. Now that it's kicking off, we'll just get it done. And this sets them up for what the year's going to be like. He's confident, he's excited. He's walked in here confident as if he's won it. So he can't have any other mindset in any competition. You have to go in wanting to win it. If you go in just wanting to take part, then you're just going to take part, ain't it? <sighs>
It's quite different this year. He's a lot more relaxed. I think at certain times when, when he needs to train, then he switches on to, right, I'm in work mode and stuff. But when he's at home, it's quite a lot more relaxed than he was. He's admitted himself that he's had a couple of bad training sessions and then when he has a bad training session that comes home with him and then he's getting a bit more agitated, more snappy, he wants to go train again just so he can perfect it. But in all actually like him stepping back, us going away for a couple of days, him just resting and putting that at the back of his mind was the best thing for him because he went back and he smashed his training. That was the best session I think he's had in a long time. So I think he's still learning how to handle it, but he's getting better and better each time. So yes, it's a lot better than last year, which is good. No, I don't ask him how he feels. He keeps his cards very close to his chest. He's very much unreadable. So like today, you won't know if he wants to be approached or not to be approached. So I kind of just stand there and if he needs something, I'm there. But um, I'll never know how he's feeling. I won't ask how he's feeling either. For him to win a major title like Britain's would be incredible. Absolutely incredible. And he can do it. It's just timing. So hopefully this is his time. Yeah, I think so. I'm Sean Clark, the, the lads mobility coach and I'm down today to help them over the whole weekend and just do anything, whatever they're wanting realistically. So it's just good to be here. The first time I ever was at a strongman comp was 2014, 2015. Luke and Tom were both there. Uh, Scotland's strongest man, it was maybe two or three hundred people, so I'm going from that to this and to be a part of the team, it's just, yeah, it's great. You always want to be doing mobility before anything, regardless of what level you're at, if you're at the top, if you're just starting out, you want to be doing mobility, so before working out, I would always be doing mobility, try to keep it more like dynamic sort of holds, so you're kind of going in and out, maybe five, ten second holds, you don't want to be doing too long, um, you can actually lose power from that, so the the important part of before events with the boys is making sure that we're just taking everything through full range of motion and as I said keeping things short not not holding for 45 seconds or anything. Then hand down, right, a few deep breaths at the bottom and back up again. Hold for one, two, I'm Ross, I'm Tom and Luke's sports therapist. Today I'm here just to make sure the boys are ready to go. Um, all the preps have been done for the last couple of weeks, a couple of months, and they are firing all cylinders, so yeah, it'll be exciting to see them perform today. Basically just keep the boys warm, ticking over. Um, we've been working on just a couple of wee niggles that the boys have had, so yeah, just um, kind of ticking off everything, making sure that these muscles and things are firing um, and they're not going to be feeling it when they perform. In Britain's Strongest Man this year we had five events. Event number one was shield carry 200 kilograms for max distance. The training for shield carry was going really well, felt really confident. Tom and I were both training extremely hard. We were doing shorter runs so we could get the turn in and be more kind of comfortable with turning with, with a heavy shield. So I felt really confident going into it. Yeah, I did really well. I exceeded, I think, my best Europe Strongest Man. And I did two full runs. This time I did just over two and a half runs. So felt really comfortable on the pickup. Really got some good speed um, in the first kind of two runs, the first 40 meters. Felt pretty comfortable. 
comfortable actually, I wasn't too taxed after it. Hamstrings were a little bit tight, but good performance, good first event. I was very confident with this event. You know, you see a lot of people training, the way people train for things and stuff, and I always kind of say this, you know, training, people can make training look good. You know, when people were saying we're gonna get 80, 70, 80 meters on the shields, you know, I thought to myself then, well, you know, the world record 60 meters. I don't think the world record is gonna get increased by that much. I knew Pa, you know, he had gone down to the equipment test and I knew he was in a very good kind of place for it. You know, Pa's really good at shield carry. But Luke was obviously good at, really good at shield as well at Europe. So he uh, came third in the shield in this Britain's as well. So, but in training, you know, I always make sure training's harder. In my eyes, the Rebel Strength, the thick Rebel Strength shield is harder than the one they use at Giants Live. I was doing 12 meters turn, 12 meters turn. So I was doing 60 meters in training, but doing it in 12 meter runs. Before Pa, I think the biggest time, or the biggest distance was 46 meters. I said to myself, well, geez, you know, I don't need to work as hard on this. And whatever Pa does, I just have to then aim for him and that's it. So let's just uh, see what Pa does and then we can take it from there. So Pa went out, he did 62 meters. I think he could have done more. He just dropped, I think in his head, he thought, right, that's me done. The good thing about the shield is well, I didn't have to use a lot of energy for it. Uh, I only had to do 65 meters, drop it, win that event, and then, you know, move on. And thankfully, like I said, I didn't have to bust a gut to kind of win that one, so. So second event, we had the, it was the heavier deadlift, 360 kilos. And they used the wheels this time, so the wheels are much harder than what you've seen last year at Giants Live than the Globes. I think these are much more solid or so. I don't know why they're harder, but anyway, they're harder. 10 kilograms up from last year as well. Heard a rumor it was gonna be a 350 kilogram uh, deadlift and <laughs> really thought it was. So that's why I did the 340 for 10 at my last training session, because I thought 350 was the weight of the bar, but it was 360, but anyway, I was lucky enough to go up last. It was me versus Pa. I knew that Bishop was a man that I had to look out for and see where he got, and he got six reps of it. Everybody else I think, was getting four, three reps, two reps, or really low row reps, and again, I knew that all I needed to do was match Bishop. Did six reps of 360, I was really buzzing for that because if you look back at Royal Albert Hall last year, I only did, I think it was two or three reps of 360. So my deadlift's going up. The six rep went away from me a wee bit. I could have maybe done another one, but I didn't have to push really, really hard. You know, it's like I said, as long as I joint first, it was a very good position. And that's what I did, joint first. I felt really fit, which was a you know a very big shock for me, especially after doing the shield, going shield, then straight into deadlifts, doing deadlifts fit, but can you perform as good in a deadlift, doing it after an event. And, you know, I did good, you know, six reps, like I said, won, won the event. Training for deadlifts had gone really well. I was kind of aiming kind of at the very minimum three reps. I felt good for four reps. Every, everything was going well. On the second rep, I felt my, my left leg kind of get a little bit tight and I just kind of stretched it back to kind of try and shake it off. And then that's when I started to cramp, started to go into spasm. And I thought it was just a bit of cramp. I gave myself kind of 10, 15 seconds kind of rest. Went to try again and then it went into cramp again, which was really frustrating because I've never had, I've never had any serious issues with, with cramping before. Unfortunately, I only managed to do two reps and I had to, uh, you know, stop kind of halfway through the deadlift, which was a pain. Um, because looking at the results, you know, I think it was Tom and Bish, they got six reps, which is awesome. A group of guys with four reps, so. You know, if I managed to get the four reps, that would have been really good points for me. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. Um, and as a result, went backstage and the, the kind of cramping and the, the spasms in my, my quad um, continued. I had to pull out of the show.
I can hardly walk up the morning so it's, I'm really sorry. This will be emotional guys, I know. Speaking to Luke this morning in the hotel. It's a disastrous state of affairs for the man because uh, uh, I really have high hopes of this event mate and I know it's, it's, uh, it's terrible. I'm just going to give Luke a second. to pull out of this, then risk getting injured doing this, not be able to do the Arnold, not be able to do World, so... It's just How right difficult decision. is it to make that decision? When it's so obviously the right decision, it's not that difficult, because, you know, my priority is keeping Luke healthy and performing well, so it's an easy decision to make, it's just not a fun decision to make. It was one of those things, so looking into, I'm looking into why it happened, Luke to to try and bet yourself and that's all I was doing but maybe maybe those things just kind of had a, an adverse effect on on my performance in the day. Axel clean and press for reps 155 kilograms in 75 seconds I think it was. You know Tom and I we'd been going head to head in training in this Axel so I knew Tom was good for at least six if he had to. Really impressed with Shane and Pa as well you know Pa getting four reps you know two top performances from those guys. Pa had done second place and the shield carry second place, deadlift for reps and second place in the axle press for reps. So he was on a roll, doing really well, but yeah, there was always only ever going to be one winner. I knew there wasn't the best pressers in this, left in this event and now had Luke pulled out, Hicks had pulled out. The only guy that was going to push me on this was Luke. He had gone out the equation so I was like, right, I can kind of really cruise this event now. Start controlling Britain's strongest man for the last kind of two events. That's what I did, you know, I think when I went up there was four reps to win. I knew I was a better presser than Pa and I knew maybe he would have got four. I thought he might have maybe pushed five at a push but um, yeah I kind of controlled that. Used all the time I could and did five nice and comfortable reps. You know I won the event on that. You know I didn't have to exert my body to any energy. I just was light training you know nice and, nice and comfortable, nice pressing and just relaxed throughout the whole kind of event. How are you feeling Tommy? Yeah I feel good man. Um, you're ahead by seven points. Yeah, and I'm not getting too excited. I've got two events left, and uh, I'm in control of the competition now, so let's see what happens. But uh, yeah, confidence. You know, I worked hard in the shield, worked hard in the deadlift, I worked hard in the axle, and I'm in a good position. So, two events to go, keep my head, and I'll be number one again. So, yeah, I feel good, very, very good. Event four was the sandbag toss over four and a half meter. I think it was like six bags up to 28 kilograms. I really thought more people would get the sandbags over. People should be completing it. You know, you're starting at 18, 20, 20, 23, 25, 28. You shouldn't really fatigue on these, this kind of event. You know, for me, it's a nice fast paced event. The explosiveness, you need to keep nice and loose. Yeah, you know, I think Shane Flowers did an unbelievable time. You know, he was the most impressive, one of the most impressive athletes on the day for me. He did 18 seconds. The yeah, standout performance was Shane again. He got the event win, he just went for it. It was great to see the confidence he had in his ability. You know, he wasn't checking behind. He just did it, he just threw. And, and I think sometimes with these throw events, that's what you've got to do. You've just got to let kind of let it all go and kind of not be cautious because as soon as you start looking behind, and I think that's what Tom did, you know, he had a wee check behind just to make sure it went over. A few other guys shot me that they didn't do it fast than other ones. I think there was two people that done it, three people that completed it and they were really slower times. So I knew that, right, Shane had basically won the event. You know, before I even went up, I knew Shane was going to win the event. I just had to control each sandbag. I think 40 seconds to complete and still come second place. So, you know, that's what I did. I was in second, third gear going into this event. Each one of mine cleared the bar by quite a bit and I still was able to hit a 22 second time. Just a nice relaxing event for myself going into the grand finale of the At The Stone. Oh, Tommy's absolutely smashing it today. I, I think most people obviously would have picked Tom to be the favourite today. You're looking at the events, it does favour him, but you've still got to go and perform. And He's done exactly that. He has just not put a foot wrong. I thought he was really smart there on the, the sandbag because he, he could potentially go faster. There's no question about that. But there's always a risk when you go faster. 
Williams. I think he just took his time, made sure he got all six over, and now he's in an unassailable position. I think he needs to put one stone up, and he's won the competition. In a five-event competition, that is dominance. It really is. And you know Tom, it's Atlas Stones. He's not going to mess around and just put one stone up. He wants to dominate. Could be an absolutely massive, massive marginal win at the end of the day. The final event was the heavy set of Atlas Stones, 120 kilos up to 200 kilos. No surprise here, Big Tommy <laughs> just went out and smashed it. I spoke to him before, I think he just needed to lift one stone. He said, I'm just going to lift one stone and have fun with it. And, you know, he got the fastest time by, I think, about eight seconds on the day. That's Tom's idea of fun. By this time, I was in a very, very good position. I think I was 10 points in, in the lead, and all I needed to do was load one at the stone. Good thing about this as well, they have the, the heavier at the stone. You know, I've always said, at this kind of level, in strongman, you should be doing heavier at the stone sets, or you should be doing different events, you know, and I'm glad Giants Live kind of listened to the crowd, listened to athletes, and actually, you know, change the events up from Britain's and put in the heavier at the stones because, for example, like the 100 to 180, you know, Andy Black, Bishops and stuff like that were getting 19, 20, 21 seconds and in the heavier stone sets, they were up to 28, 29 seconds. So that one stone makes a big difference and you can't really get who is the strongest on the last event when it comes down to a light set of stones because that can change podium places a lot. Again, at this event, it was, I was, in full control of it. You know, I really wanted Pat to hit second place, so I really kind of helped him with his last event and told him to focus, you know. Here's an Atlas stone run, all he needs to do is load five stones, use me as a pacemaker in the first three, and then, you know, that's it. And I think that's what he did, you know. First one he kept up with me, second one kept up, third one kept up, then I one motioned 180, lap 200. And the thing with me is, what well, I was really shocked at, I won that stone event with 21 seconds and second place was 28. That's why, I'm really glad Giants Live did this heavy stone set. I think the last heavy stone set I did was World's Strongest Man, so it was nice to just get a feel for them. I've got the confidence of them, you know, 21 seconds in second, third gear. I know if I go all, you know, all out under 20 seconds again, I can do it. Good stead going into the competition season. I just wanted to see where my body was, see where my mind was, see how conditioned and strong I was, and it put me in a very, very good set to know that I'm, you know, above where I was this time last year, and I'm above my Britain Strongest Man performance in November. That is the uh, Britain Strongest Man done. Tom won by 12 points. So yeah, he did okay, I guess. Dead tough, dead happy for Tom. He uh, he put in a performance of a lifetime today, I think. Really a cut above everyone else today, Tom was. So really proud, really happy. Bit gutted, obviously for myself. It is what it is, it's one of those things. So now we re regroup. We're flying out to Arnold's on Wednesday. My leg's easing off now, which is good, so I'm, I'm actually quite happy. I was really worried that I'd done some really bad damage to it. I, have, I haven't, so that's good. Um, so recover, Big Tom. It was like a walk in the park for him today, so... Um, yeah, buzzing for him, really happy. So that's it, Britain's Strongest Man. Two years in a row, Tom Stoltman. Easy money. Intro, intro. Intro. Right, let's go. Right guys, so that's the competition over. We've got a massive queue of people trying to meet us, so we will see you after.
Yeah, Happy. really. Uh, hey guys, I'm, I feel like I've just competed again after that. Don't know about you. It's been tiring, very, very um, tiring, but. Oh, Britain Strawberries Man is done. Two uh, times champ, right here. So it's, it's good, you know. I'm lucky for Luke, but you can heal up and get back to Arnold, you know, there's no point. Like we've done in training, you know, there's no point going all the way to the end when you're going to injure yourself even more. So it's the smartest thing to do, you know. Arnold's is important as well, so we'll be back there next week. Anyway, guys, thank you for all the support. Keep liking these videos, keep commenting, and uh, stay spicy from the champ. Yes. Stay safe, smile, stay spicy. Stay spicy. That's my, and then I keep ringing that little bell. Ding 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 ding